So today I received this package from Singapore. It came from a company called IC Station. It's a kit. They wanted me to promote their uh, their little web store, so there's their logo. And they asked me if I would if there was something from their catalog they'd like to send me to do a review on and build, and I picked a clock kit. So it arrived in the mail. This is the unboxing. And there we have it. Let's take a look at what's in this. This is a six digit LED clock and it comes complete with all of the, uh, the parts but I couldn't find any documentation on it whatsoever. There's no assembly instructions included. What I've got here is I've got a bag full of parts, some LEDs, some switches, an IC, it's going to be a, uh, what is this thing here? It's probably that mega chip. And some components. And a nice little circuit board. Complete with their logo on here. Get a shot of that so you can see who supplied me with this. There's the kit number. This one's an ICSK058A. So what we're going to do is, in this video, we're going to build this clock. Now looking at the circuit board, it looks to be pretty well laid out. <laughs> it's foolproof. I shouldn't need any instruction manual or assembly instructions to put this together because everything is labeled on the board. So I guess first things first, we'll start by, let's start by mounting just about anything. Let's start mounting the 1K resistors over here. So there's a series of 1K resistors and I got a bunch of them here. These are all 1K resistors here, brown, black, red. So I'm going to start and I'm going to mount all the 1K resistors on the board and solder them all down. So this is a, a pretty basic, it's a through hole um, kit. So I'm going to start just by mounting the resistors flush down to the board. And I'll put all the resistors in place first and then solder them all at once. So we'll do all the 1K resistors. I'm kind of anal when I build, so I always like to put my parts in the same way. I know some people will just mismatch parts, but I kind of like to keep them all facing the same direction. So I'm going to populate the 1K resistors and solder them on, and then we'll proceed with some of the other components. Okay, that has the 1K resistors all mounted. So now we'll do the same for the 2K resistors. And from the looks of things, they haven't included a 2K resistor. They've included some, they said there's supposed to be two 2K resistors on here, but they, they didn't include any 2K resistors in the package of parts. I've got uh, three 2.2K resistors here so they may have substituted them and they just marked them as 2K on the board. Um, I see that there's also a 10K and I see that they've given me two 10K resistors, which is only appears to be one that goes in the circuit. So maybe there's a few extra parts that were just included in the parts uh, bag. And I see there's a 5.1K resistor and I see that there are there's two 5.1s they've given me here so there looks to be a few extra resistors that have included I'm going to mount the two 2.2k over here on the board I'm going to mount them where they're marked 2k because either they've changed the part value or they uh, misprinted it on the board but I think the value is probably supposed to be this one 2.2 Next goes in the 
K resistor over here and I'm going to mount the 10K. Okay, next I'll mount the capacitors. It's a couple of little ceramic capacitors on here. They're labeled 104. I go down here. It's hard to see on this camera when it's up high like this. I move around on the bench a bit and sometimes get out of frame. But here's where our capacitors go here. Polarity is not important on ceramic capacitors, so you can mount them in any which way. Next is a 10 microfarad electrolytic. Now the electrolytic capacitor is polarized, so you have to make sure you get the polarity correct. And it will be marked with a plus and a minus, so the minus side going to the minus side on the board. So put that little cap down there. Solder it in place. Next we'll put in the 7805 or 78L05 that's a low power regulator and this is it here. It's marked 78L05. This is the 5 volt regulator and it goes in right here where it's marked 78L05. It is again marked with the front. It's got a flat side on it. It goes in just like that. And I like to mount my semis nice and flat to the board without a lot of leads sticking out. I like my projects to be relatively neat. I used to build a lot of kits years and years ago just for fun and I uh, haven't done it for a while but sometimes it's kind of nice. This is the, I guess the third, uh, no more than that, it's like the fifth clock I've built. I've built a few of them over the years. Got a couple of large, uh, large ones in the house that I built. Next I'll mount the transistors. There are uh, six transistors. They say S8550. They'll all have a number on them. Yep, they're all numbered. And they all just go in like this. And I see even another extra part, like they've, they've included extra parts, I'm assuming in case someone loses one or one gets damaged or something, but they've given me an extra transistor. I only see six, six holes here for transistors, but there's an extra one. Oh, this is another one on the board. Oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> they didn't give me an extra transistor. There's another one down the bottom, of the bottom corner here of the board. So I'll mount all the transistors in place. We'll now mount the buzzer. It's got a positive terminal on here. It tells you which one it is. So we'll put the buzzer in place here. Now the only thing that uh, is concerning me right now is the power jack. Uh, there's two. There's two. Um, There's two connectors, mark J1 and J2, and I don't know which one is the actual input. Obviously, this this is going to connect to it here, but is it that one? 
does the power go there or does the power plug go over here because they're marked backwards if it goes here it looks like the uh, power plug plugs in it looks like the polarity is incorrect because this one's marked positive and this one's marked negative as you can see the color of the wires is incorrect so if it goes there that would be correct but it would this would end have the plug sticking off the side of the board I don't know if that's the case I have to kind of study this and see which uh, which terminal appears to be uh, looks to be that this one here is a, maybe for a buzzer or an external speaker because it, the, the, the traces on here are connected to the buzzer and to this transistor which would be the, the buzzer output. So I have a feeling that this other one up here, this is going to be the power input and that would go through this diode so it is diode protected. So I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that that one is the power input and that the, the wires are backwards on this because uh, the red should be positive and as we can see here where these go um, the positive mark lead is going to the diode here so this has got to be the power input the other side of the diode goes down to it's here it goes down to the regulator so that is it. it is it is polarity protected that's what this diode is for this is to protect if you connect the polarity backwards but it looks like this um, connector that they've given us that goes in here the wires are the incorrect polarity this should be the red wire here that should be the red wire and this should be the black wire let me put that in that way I can't even do that though because it's going to it'll affect the LEDs where the LED sits but that's the only concern I've got now the only parts that are left to mount is the crystal and the LEDs and the switches and the uh, the IC so let's get the crystal in place so the crystal goes down onto the board and solder that in place Okay, that one's in place. We have the switches to set the time, three of them. Switches are in place, the only thing remains is the LEDs and the IC. We'll start by mounting the IC socket. The IC will be obviously the last thing that gets inserted onto the board after everything else is mounted and ready to go put the socket in. I'm just going to bend a couple of the pins over here. Now we'll mount the, uh, the seven segment displays. They only go in one way and they're marked on the board which way we put them in. And we'll just tack these in place. There's one pin on each just to hold them in place. So then I can go back and solder them all in. Do the rest of them. And then the last thing to do is to plug the IC in and apply power. And the kit is then complete. And we'll see how it looks. One thing I don't understand is this styrofoam that they put the IC in, this is not any static by any stretch of the imagination. And yet they've mounted an IC and a bunch of LEDs and shipped it like that. So I'm hopeful that the IC itself isn't uh, bad, but let's just uh, pop it in and see whether it, it works. So the IC only goes in one way. The, the pin one is donated by the notch up here and it goes in just like this. There. 
Oh, and I just have the power jack I have to install. Remember, our polarity is backwards. These wires are incorrect. So we'll just install that. And then I will get a, a power source for it. And we'll test it. So there the unit is all assembled. We connect power and nothing happens. And yes, uh, the, the polarity is, it is backwards. This is the positive lead. I've got my positive for my battery going to the one mark positive on the board. If I put my meter on it, I was feeding it with a 12 volt battery. If I put my meter on, I've got my 12 volts, 11.2 volts here. My regulator is working, I've got 5 volts going into the IC. So I know my regulator is working, but I've got nothing. I've got some voltage on some of the IC pins here, 5 volts, 5 volts, 1 volt, 1 volt, 4 volts, 0, 5, etc. So there's voltage making its way through, but I have no no light on any of the LEDs. So, I have to do some troubleshooting on this and see why nothing is lighting up. I'll get the scope out and we'll see if we got any signals and see if anything's oscillating and see why it's not working. Um, as they say, I already considered that maybe the IC itself is no good because um, it uh, was packed in styrofoam. Not the best way to ship parts that are electrostatically sensitive. If we look at the scope, the oscillator is running. So part of the chip is working, but I don't see any. I don't see any outputs. I see DC outputs. I don't see. It's almost like it's in blanking mode. Right. I don't see any outputs attempt. I have you know, oscillation, but no clock. I got the oscillator running from the crystal, so we know that part of the circuit's working. I should be seeing clock signals here. I should be seeing on the transistors, I should be seeing multiplex drive for the six transistors, for the six common, I think these are common anodes, so these are the anode drivers. The cathode driver is right off the chip itself, and I'm not seeing, I should see a clock signal here, a timing signal, and I'm seeing nothing. The only thing I'm getting is I'm getting oscillation from the, the oscillator going into the IC. There it is. But I'm not getting anything coming out of this IC. So I have a sneaking suspicion that the IC is no good. Oh. I was hoping this project would work. I kind of was looking forward to that. Oh well, I guess it uh, got damaged in uh, in transit somewhere. I certainly didn't screw anything up putting it together. I put it together exactly as the silk screening was on the board, unless the silk screening is wrong. But we'll uh, look at this and see if I can get it going, because I'm kind of interested in see if I can get this project working. Maybe the chip's not programmed. <laughs> you never know, right? Could have shipped me one with uh, no programming on the chip. Could have slipped through quality control. This is just a standard Atmel. And uh, it was supposed to be fully programmed and ready to go. But as you can see, it's not doing anything. Just the oscillator's working. It's like the thing's not programmed.